WrestleMods fans, we are here in Las Vegas, Nevada at SEMA Show. This is the biggest and baddest auto convention in America, and we are going to go check out some of our favorite builds from across the globe. Let's go see. <laughs> saw some incredible custom builds, like this classic Mustang Fastback at the Spider Auto booth. Pacific Performance Engineering showed up with this tastefully restored 1970 Chevelle, and it looks stunning in black with white stripes. Barrett Jackson showed up with some of its most desirable cars coming up soon to the auction block, including this 1959 Buick Invicta, nicknamed Blue Suede Shoes. A Jeff Hayes Customs 1967 Corvette convertible. And the biggest eye catcher in their booth, Buster Posey's 1967 Ford Mustang Eleanor Tribute, powered by an 828 horsepower Borla stack injected 572 cubic inch Boss Hemi and mated to a Bowler Performance 4L80 E transmission. Dynamat had a special car in their booth, Joe Rogan's 1969 Chevy Nova. An incredible rust mod packing plenty of horsepower with a Chevy supercharged LT4 crate engine under the hood. Willie B's insane wide bodied Hellcat swapped 1966 Dodge Charger was in the height suspension booth and it was impressive to see in person. HP Tuners had the C10 Slayer in their booth, a six-wheeled monster Chevy pickup with a huge blower and stacks and oversized rear wing. The highly anticipated Chevy ZZ632 big block crate engine, the Bowtie's most powerful naturally aspirated engine ever created made its SEMA debut in Hoonigan's third gen Camaro Z28 build. This 10.3 liter engine cranks out over a thousand horsepower and 876 foot pounds of torque. What's up guys, we're here with Chris Decker and his incredible 67 El Camino. Um, you guys have probably seen this thing on social media, it's a super neat car. Um, <laughs> he's here in the Fitech booth, uh, as you can tell. So we're gonna let him talk a little bit about, uh, the first thing that really catches everyone's attention is this giant blower right here uh, and the engine. So we'll let him talk a little bit about what's under the hood here. So first, first of all, of course, it's got a Fitech Ultimate EFI system with Fitech's 102 throttle body. Uh, it's got a Whipple three liter supercharger on there and it's driven through the Wagner Motorsports pulleys for their whole front drive system. It's got the uh, coil covers and valve covers from Wagner Motorsports. It's, uh, it's an LS3 that I disassembled in the uh, beginning of the year and did a forged rotating crank from uh, Carrillo, Carrillo rod, CP pistons, ARP studded, and then uh, bolted it back together with, and put Texas Speed drivetrain through it and uh, ported it to match the intake to the blower through the wow. into the heads. So everything's got a nice, clean, smooth flow. Uh, we were out at Fitech about a month ago and on the dyno it made 821 to the tire. Oh. And it that's, was a little that's over, the question everyone wants yeah, to know because yeah. I mean that, that thing's pretty serious. So. Yeah, and it was a little over 750 on the torque. I don't remember wow. the exact number on the torque. Wow. Uh, but yeah, from a power plant standpoint, that's <laughs> that's about where it's at. I mean, it's got a it's backed up with a six speed, so I actually love to get out and put it oh, on the freeway okay. and cruise. Yeah. Uh, it's got ultimate headers with a Black Widow exhaust. Okay. Uh, and then I'm running uh, tubular A arms from Global West, uh, upper and lowers with their lower extended one to give me a little more travel in okay. the shock. That's part of what helped me get the stance down to where I wanted it. Yeah. It's got ABC Performance, their front uh, sway bar, and okay. then all of uh, the ABC Performance mini tub kit, which we can check out in a minute here. So this is a like a spline sway bar, yeah, like exactly. almost NASCAR style. Huh? Yeah, it's the big spline with the big arms and it's fully adjustable. You got like six different locations you can go. Okay. You can even preload it if you want to preload it, depending on how you're trying to use the car. And it's all on it, you know, swivel joints. So they have really clean install too, like all your plumbing and, and wiring and everything, super nice. You got AN everywhere. Yeah, I tried really hard to hide as much as I could. One of the things I really dug about the valve cover coil over coil cover pack was it kind of kind of cleans it all up yeah. and takes takes some of that messiness away. Yeah, it's that, a little hard with great. the with the intercooler and all the plumbing that goes with the blower as well. Right. But I tried to hide it, run it up underneath the fenders and and you know I put the the heat exchanger here and hid the pump over there. Just try to not have it just be like spaghetti. No, <laughs> no, it looks really and, good. You did a great job. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm thank you. I'm really happy with the the overall packaging being that there's just a lot of sensors, a lot of fuel lines, water lines, yeah. there's a lot to try to 
compress all down into a little area and now we got vacuum lines for yep, boost yep. and everything else so it's yeah it's it, it's a lot going on and it's really a lot of work to make it look this clean that's why i want oh, to thank you to i really appreciate it. it so i see you got the cage going throughout the car some really Correct. neat cage work tell us a little bit about how that started and where that where okay that's, that's a that's actually kind of a funny story so I used to have a big block in the car and I realized when I had the big block in it, it just made way too much power for a stock <laughs> chassis. It was like, well, you, you kind of launch a car and it's kind of wanting to do the pretzel yeah, twist. You're yeah. like, this is probably not a good thing. So yeah. I, I had a 427 in it. Okay. And at the time I decided, it's time to put a cage in it. I like going drag racing. So okay. I actually went out to Chris Alston and bought a kind of a somewhat generic Chevelle kit because okay. they didn't make one obviously for an El Camino, for a right? specific El Camino kit. So this yeah. is a full chrome Ollie, for, it's a 14 point roll cage. It was oh, wow. TIG welded in my dad, uh, in my buddy's dad's backyard. Wow, okay. Because at the time I didn't have a TIG welder and uh, he was on vacation and so we kind of just leveled the car out <laughs> <laughs> in the back backyard in and, and yeah, just started taking Perfect. away. And, and uh, yeah, I used the button, other buddy's dad's tubing bender to modify anything that kind of had to get a little tweak okay. here or there. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I used to do a lot of drag racing, so it was, okay. it was a lot of fun. And now I'm kind of. So when you had the big block, you were you were running this thing with bigger tires, drag race type setup and stuff. Yeah, and it was slicks with skinnies in the front, okay. and uh, you know, it meant 1001 at 137. And it was a fun car, do little baby wheelies. Okay. You know, and that's super neat to see a car that's gone through a transformation yeah, like that. Like it's just kind of good at everything. Basically, it's a 20 year, 23 year evolution. Okay. This car has gone. It's had a 350 in it. It's had a 427 in it. Wow. It's had a 523 big block. Has naturally aspirated LS3 and now a blown yeah. LS3 well, that's fully forged. You're going the right way. It just keeps <laughs> stepping up in intensity, yeah. so that's that's good. Yeah. So five different variations of engines, three different variations of transmissions, two different brake systems, two different cooling systems, <laughs> and three fuel systems. So, yeah, it's continuing to evolve, and can, and I'm sure it will more. Uh, so for all you guys with uh, just cruising a little 350 out there, be patient. You know, just just stick with it. This guy's got. A lot of love for this car and it shows i mean it just yeah. it just keeps getting better so i don't know i don't know what you have up your sleeve next i don't know how you could i don't this, either yet <laughs> i'm sure you'll figure it out eventually that's the problem with coming to a show like I, uh, this right you get you get tempted by new things that's uh, it you know that's, that's it that's where the brain starts thinking about the next idea so i don't know we'll see i've only had a little bit of time to walk <laughs> around i got well i'm sure you're talking to a lot of people about this thing it's, it's super neat so yeah thank you let's uh let's look at the interior yeah absolutely it's not full race car right it's a bit of a blend okay yeah uh so it's still got cage going through the car but it's got you know more of your pro touring type seat it's real comfortable it's actually got a stereo with four speakers in there wow um yeah, but it's still, got like a real purpose-built look, but it still looks comfortable. It's, it's still it's know. comfortable but simple, right? I mean, it, I had to do my custom headliner because with the roll cage and the bars being mm. so high, so it's got a formed uh, you know headliner in there, and then you know Wardell Industries helped me out and uh, did a really good job with modifying the tunnel and everything oh, for okay. the carpet because with a T56, yep. you, I brought the whole tunnel up two inches yeah. just to fit the darn you thing in there. basically cut right? the whole stock tunnel out. Yeah, I called it the Franken tunnel by the time yeah. I was said and done. Yeah. You're adding so much metal and, and getting that all in there to fit. And, and you but, drive this car quite a bit. Yeah, um, you mentioned since you put I did like 2,000 miles. Yeah, in. since I did the LS swap, I put 10,000 miles on the wow. car. Okay. Uh, before the blower was about eight, and I put about two on it just this year in between working on the car. That's, so that's what they're for. I love to drive it. It's if I could drive it to work, I'll drive it to work. You know, if there's an excuse to just go to the grocery store or a little cruising, I'm like, gotta go. <laughs> that's the best. I mean, I bet you get a lot of looks. Like people see a fully caged car going down the road. Yeah, you, know, you, you get a lot of double takes. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and it's unique. You know, like being an El Camino and just the overall vibe of the car is like real tough looking car. So oh, I'm sure thank you. you're, you're breaking necks out there. Yeah, and the, I mean, from the back now with the the mini tub and. And the 345s, I mean, it. Yeah, you're behind it. There's a lot of meat back there. That's enough tire, man. That 345. Yeah, so I bet you still have some traction issues, though. Here a little bit. It's you know, it, like it's a stick car, right? Yeah, it's all in how right. you want to play play right. the game, right? You want to drop the clutch, sure. We can make it a tire right. fire, but right. you want to lean into it, and you, it'll roll out and move pretty darn hard. But yeah, now with 345s on there, and and you know, American Racing's 19 by 12. By 12. It's, yeah, it's okay. got a good footprint back there. Yeah, literally and, a foot. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. it's about 14 inches wide, bulge to bulge, you know, about 13 inches of tread. So, I mean, okay. it's, that's a pretty good amount of, yeah. of rubber to put down. Well, um, with, with the El Camino, do you feel like you have a little less weight over the back? Or right now, so is it evened out with some of the work? You know, I done? haven't had a chance to put it on back on the scale since I put the blower on it. But when it was naturally aspirated with the LS3, it was 51.49. Okay. So it was that's actually really, really close. Yeah, so that's really good. Some weight shifted around a little bit. The gas tank's a little bit bigger than the last one in there. And I've added okay. some panels. 
So I'm sure it's still a little bit more nose heavy with adding a blower because those things definitely are not light. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was 52 or 53% wow. now in the front. So it, I don't expect it to be too terrible. It's it's a pretty well managed car. It's um, thankfully pretty well behaved even when you get on it pretty hard. It's not you yeah. know, real squirrely doing the big fishtail stuff. It just tends to kind of haze them and move on out, which is nice. And you do like um, some autocrossing here and there with this That's thing? the goal. I haven't had a chance to yet. Uh, unfortunately, this year with coming to SEMA, I kind of changed my, uh, what am I going to do with the car this year yeah. plans? But uh, now that this is uh, kind of, I'm here, I'm actually hoping to maybe go do the next good guys okay. and go put out for the last one and see if I can just go saw out the wheel a little bit. And yeah, yeah. Just see what fun. it works. And I'm sure I'll find little things that I want to change <laughs> from just doing that. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, exactly. And, that's the fun uh, of it. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I mean, you get out and you drive your car and that's what fine tunes a car. That's what perfects Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've loved taking it up into the mountains, going and you know, yeah, trying to straighten out yeah. some uh, mountain roads. There you go. Uh, nothing like a windy road to just have a little fun. And it's been really well mannered out there. and. and so I'm curious to see how it'll do. I have a feeling I'm gonna end up putting a different steering box in it, something a little faster ratio. Okay, yeah. Because it's a variable ratio now, which is, it's great for overall, but I mean, watching these guys out there, like, I mean, I need to be able to move it about yeah, this much. Yeah, the lock-to-lock lock difference. Yeah, it's gotta, yeah, it's it's gonna have to change, I imagine. But, but I mean, like you said, this is great, like, I mean, for actually just driving around yeah. and enjoying your car, you know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, thanks. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, this thing's got all the cool parts, man. This is like everyone's dream build. I'm sure there's a lot of guys with El Caminos that just look at this car and that's the goal, you know, that's the benchmark, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I've been very fortunate. A lot of, lot of positive feedback. So cool. it's, it's been surprisingly very well received, which is obviously Make, feels great. You makes know? it all worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for taking some time talking yeah, to us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for Beautiful having me Beautiful resto mod and uh, stick with us and check some more of these cars out. <laughs> I don't know. That works. Terrible. It's just yeah. a yeah. mechanic and they just put me in here. <laughs>Speaking of powerful engines, we stopped by the Blueprint Engines booth and got to take a look at some of their super clean turnkey crates, including the very same 427 supercharged LS that rests in our 69 Chevelle Wolf Killer build. Banks Engineering, famous for creating insanely powerful marine engines, will soon offer supercharged diesel engines with at least 650 horsepower and ungodly torque numbers, like the ones stuffed into this wicked C10 build. There were many unique builds at the show, like this diesel-powered rat rod, this super sleek, blacked-out Chevy C10, this wild GMC hot rod truck that seems to share some parts with the Plymouth Prowler, this super classy Chevy 3100 pickup, Brian Scotto's famous Napalm Nova, a crazy 1970 Challenger Resta mod sporting a Hellcat, and a couple Riller Award contestants. We also spotted the Elephant Swap 1968 Dodge Charger, appropriately nicknamed Dumbo. Boasting a thousand horsepower from Dodge's highly sought after 426 supercharged Hemi, this Charger looks like it's ready to flap its ears and fly. Ford pretty much dominated the event with some clean Rustamon classics on display, like this 1968 Mustang Fastback, this 1969 Mustang Fastback, a dazzling Ford Galaxy, a couple of Ford's Illuminator EV swapped Rustamons, a ride-along drift event with Formula D's biggest stars, and hundreds of new and old Broncos. Dude, we're in sync right now. I know, we're synced up. <laughs> hey guys, we're here at the Fitech EFI booth at SEMA. We just want to give a huge shout out to these guys. There's a good reason why we have done Fitech's electronic fuel injection kits on at least a half dozen of our sweepstakes builds. As far as I tell them why. Yeah, so as you can see, the booth is like flooded with people and that's for a reason. These Fitech units are super easy to use and the, probably the best way to get EFI and all the advantages that come with that on your car, get rid of that carburetor. These guys are great. So they have a product for almost every application you have and they're always coming out with new stuff. So make sure you check out their website and they also have a lot of good informational tech tip stuff. So check that out too. Um, but we're here checking out their booth and we'll show you guys a little bit. All right guys, I'm here with the boss man, Mike, and he's gonna tell us some of the newest innovations over at Fitech and what they've been working on for you guys. Yeah, so right behind us, we have a dual touchscreen um, gauge setup. So we saw the desire and want that everybody wanted more technology out of Fitech. So here you go, we're giving it to you. So you got several choices to choose between display setup. Um, one cool feature is you can set up switches and control it all through the Fitech. That's Touch awesome. screening, everything. 
Um, there's race modes on this. We have an ultra bright one, uh, seven inch screens, 10 inch screens. I mean, we're gonna cover it all. Wow. Uh, GPS is built in. I mean, this thing is just gonna be out of control. So this pro would pretty much just, you can just plug this right into your dash. Yeah. Right? Just fit it right in. Yep, and it communicates with all our Fitech systems. So it just, it's just a, and what's cool is something like this is gonna constantly evolve. So it's only gonna continue to get better. So guys, there's a couple other interesting products coming out of Fitech. You have to check out what Fitech has going for LSs over here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's out of control now. Uh, the LS game's so strong and so, so involved. So we keep adding to our collection. I would say. So we have 500 horsepower kits, 750 horsepower kits. Now we have 1,000 horsepower kits. Oh. Um, we have retro LS systems. We have retro port LS systems. We have two by, uh, two by four LS systems, tri-power LS systems. Um, so the list just keeps going. And then we even have the just standalone harnesses for people. So if they don't want to do all this other things, they can just put a standalone harness. Um, your resto mod cars, every time you have an LS, we throw a Fitech on there. You yeah. have one of our new products on there, which is a retro LS port. So make sure you check that one out. That is awesome. I mean, you guys are creating an application for any kind of setup yeah. that somebody would want on their LS. Yeah, from mild to wild. Thank you guys so much for watching our tour of the SEMA show. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to get notified every time we drop a video. And if you want to roll up to SEMA in your very own Resto Mod, get entered to win this LS1 swapped 1970 Camaro plus $20,000 in cash. Good luck.